Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. How is it going? Oh, it's going well, Steve. I'm, I'm having a ball at the moment. Well, since <laughs> uh, revealing these demonstrations and people loving them, loving the, the pictures you've done, it's mm. kind of, I mean, you were doing loads of other pictures anyway, but it's kind of injected some enthus- more enthusiasm into into doing more That's right. of them, hasn't yes. it? Well, funny you should say that, but absolutely right, of course, since I've been doing them, and uh, I've clocked up about six now. Um, the I've, I've interspersed them with some on grey, you know, normal class pictures. Yeah. And they have affected the, those class pictures. Really? Slightly, yes. I've, I've found that I'm, because I've had to loosen up, Especially with some of them, you know, with the very, demonstrations, very impressionistic. And I'm going, I'm moving in. That's moving into the um, people will see it eventually. They'll see it, and I think that's lovely to do that to to, to gain some kind of insight. Well, you've said before about doing uh, more impressionism stuff mm. is good because it rela- relaxes you, it loosens up your style, and, mm. and you're forced to think in a different way. And so I suppose, I mean, you did do that anyway with some slightly impressionistic Mm. pictures, but the ones that you're doing in these demonstrations are so impressionistic that it's it's really challenging your uh, Mm. realism approach. Mm. It's got to be good, right? Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, I've said for years and years and years, and I've expounded uh, on it so many times on demonstrations and workshops and classes that... uh, impressionism is actually the it's like a statement that you make without a structure I, I, I don't know whether I can describe that any better than that I mean you have in your mind a structure you see a structure then you create that same structure but with an impressionistic viewpoint which in it makes it more it makes it more alive really mm-hmm. you know, rather than copying exactly what you see by putting an impression there and, and inclined towards, you kind of get a movement, really. It's, I tell you what it's all just suddenly reminded me of. You, when, you get slight, when you get a movement on a camera, sometimes you take a photograph and you get it slightly bit jarring because people move or something. Yeah. And that signifies that there's a, a movement. Yeah. Whereas everybody sort of stands absolutely still, stock still, and you take a picture, it freezes them. Yeah. That's what you get in a way, with the Impressionism, you could kind of get a slight movement yeah, in the picture. it's like it's alive a mm. little bit more. And this creates the impression, when you look at it, that it's real, as it's opposed to um, an absolute copy with, like, frozen. Fine detail and, mm. like, in focus, mm. all of that kind of thing. I hadn't thought of that before, but I, I, I hope I've explained it well enough. But uh, it's... Uh, it, 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 makes sense to me that that mm. is how you see I mean, if, you, if you get a, a completely out of focus by somebody moving dramatically then it wouldn't work that way but a slight movement does imply when you look at the picture that, that there is movement they've, they've moved well you see it you've moved and the photographer has a go at them don't move stay still <laughs> too late now we're <laughs> painting it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway enough of that that's great that's uh that's really interesting well yes there's, there's i mean the there's uh the reaction's been so good that there is another one on the cards coming up yes and um, that will will continue we hope to blow people away so it uh, probably well, the next even one mo- will, more will, so yeah uh, we'll if they were thought away. that that one was good then the next one's going to well, be well one of the things you can re- remember when people see the constable was the first one i did you know in this in this this uh, range mm. and uh, the one that we're probably going to be putting up I think is probably the fifth one I've done mm. so th- <laughs> that one is f- four times I would say four times better I've had f- another practice of another three between the two yeah and you can see it you can actually see it in the picture yeah well is I it, can anyway yeah I think your uh, confidence, confidence yeah. with the paper and how far you can push it um all these kinds of uh things that you'd learn from the constable and all those other pictures uh you were a bit 
braver, if that's the word, a bit more yeah. kind of up for it, you know, like, right, okay, yeah. Yeah. let's, let's relaxed, see how far really. I can push this. I think it, 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 I've always said that uh, you need to relax when you're doing artwork. You need to really relax because then the real you starts to come forward. Yeah. But when you're using your logical mind all the time, you're, you're stuck in that um, frame of mind. Whereas if you kind of... Uh, relax and let it all hang out sort of thing you know what i mean just yeah just sort of let flop flow. back and then paint you're in another 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 area and that's what i've probably learned to do and of course see by enjoying it and that's another thing if you enjoy what you're doing and, and you can't you know this as I, i've said it many times over the last few weeks I just can't wait to get back to the drawing board again. I come away from it thinking, uh, I think I'll give it a rest for now. Half an hour, three quarters of an hour. I know, I know. I know. I'll go back I, and have another go. I've been <laughs> on the phone to you and then you, I've said, uh, you said, all right, I'm, I'm stopping now. It's about six o'clock or whatever. And you said, I'm, I'm going to stop now. I'm like, okay, great. And then, uh, I don't know, half an hour, three quarters of an hour later, I need to ring you. And I hear all the stuff in the background, you switching it all off again. And I'm like, hold on a minute. <laughs> you said uh, that you were going to stop. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I just couldn't pull myself away no, from no, it. No, I had you, to you, get back to it. Just you, do a little bit more. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure all of those people, out, all those uh, artists and members out there that uh, would, would relate to that. Yeah. If, they, if they're really into it. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so we've got uh, a few questions this week. It's nice for people to be getting in touch. And then some lovely feedback that we want to share with everyone. So the first email came from Paul and he says, Hi, Stephen Colin. I'm hoping that Colin could help me out with a problem. Uh, I'm just starting to learn pen and wash. Uh, the pens that I use are Micron by Secura and the Faber-Castell pit pens. They both state that they are waterproof, but when I apply the wash the link the ink starts to bleed um i hope you don't mind me asking a watercolor question many thanks paul well um i've used the i haven't used the first one but i've used the uh the pit the pit and the very fine i think it's extra fine it's the finest one they do anyway and i've never used the watercolor immediately on top of them i've usually finished the picture then give it a little bit of time. Yeah. Then I do the wash. So it may be that he's going in too quick. How long do you think? It, I mean, in- I've, I've really no idea. I've, from my experience, they're almost instant drying. That's that was my experience. Yeah. I've never ever seen a bleed. Doesn't usually uh, dry out. Uh, and it, it could be the long. paper as well. It's got to remember that if you you're using good sketching paper or, or our watercolor paper is ideal for this. Um, it should be fine. I can't see a problem with that, but I, I would say to give it time before you put the watercolour wash on, just to make sure. Just to see if that makes a difference. Mm, mm. Yeah, because you wouldn't think that they would, once they're dry, once you apply the wash over, it shouldn't... It shouldn't no, you shouldn't do. Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't happen. Shouldn't happen, should it? Okay. Uh, next one from Wendy. Hi, Stephen and Colin. I'm referring to Colin's graced girl picture of the Ford Witch. Uh, picture uh, this i noticed this is done on watercolor paper and i wondered what surface colin has used whether it's rough or smooth i'm presuming that it's the smooth paper that colin stocks uh, but would like to like the confirmation i'm really enjoying the courses and i'm very pleased with my efforts so far the only problem is that framing is getting expensive <laughs> <laughs> wendy uh, well, I can help her with that in a minute or two. But let's deal with the uh, paper. Yes, that uh, our watercolour paper is ideal. And again, good quality sketching paper. I say good quality. You, you can't beat really nice... You know, th- thick, mm, thicker. Oh, yes, thicker. Thicker is best. Because our, our one is 300 gram. Yeah, you, you don't have to go thick. as thick as that. But uh, ideal, in an ideal world, yes, you would. The thicker you get, the better it's going to be. The more, more stable it's going to be. Uh, and smooth, definitely. If you use anything uh, that's got any bubble, especially watercolour paper, because some watercolour paper is quite raggy, yeah. and that wouldn't work very well. It it tends to make the pastel look dirty, so I wouldn't do that. So smooth, smooth paper, and it should be fine. Great. What about the framing? <laughs> 
Framing. Well, now this is a bone of contention, and I absolutely agree. Framing is expensive. However, if you're clever, you find you build, you get your frame first, right, and you get your mount first, so you know the size, and then you make your picture just a little bit bigger than the inner part of the mount. Not much. I would say that. Not the couple subject. Of millimeters. Hmm? Not the subject, but the. No, the 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 the, the picture itself. The size of the painting. The size of the painting. Yes. Uh, the the paper. Well, what you've got to you think uh, the size of the paper is immaterial. Really, it's it's the image size. You, you can have a large piece of paper with, with the image size in the middle of it. No, yeah. I don't think that's that's. Uh, not Would relevant. you draw a box or something? Uh, you if could. you had like an A4 piece of paper you could. And, the, and the pictures. This is my ignorance because I don't paint myself. No, but well, I tell you the ideal. I tell you the ideal thing to do then. If if you get your mount, like I've told you, get your frame first, buy it first. Ready frame made stuff. One. Yeah, ready made. Yeah, ready made. Oh, absolutely. They're much much cheaper. And your mount as well. Always put a mount on. Don't put it directly on glass. So you've got a mount and a frame. Your size of the mount will di- dictate the size of the picture mm-hmm. that you're going to paint. Yeah. Now, you don't have to, you can measure that if you like, but that's usually standard. Then you make your paper at least a centimetre, at least a centimetre, I would say a centimetre and a half, larger than the outside rim of the frame. Mount, I mean. Like, right. Have you got me? Yep. So, so, so when you put it in, it's, it's a, you've yeah. got a, like a trim around. And then when you paint your picture, paint it slightly larger than the opening of the mount. In other words, if you put the mount on it, it's going to yeah. cover just a fraction, perhaps half a centimetre of your picture. That way you've got movement. You can adjust it very slightly. Yeah. I've done that with all my pictures. In fact, very often people wouldn't know, but if they deframe one of my pictures, they'd find little bits of painting all the way around. Yeah. Uh, because I... I I can move it to where I want it to be. Sometimes you can move it slightly, slightly off. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I would do. And I'd use ready-made mounts. There you go. That's the cheaper frames. way of doing it. It is a cheap way. It's very expensive otherwise. Yeah, to continue, especially. If, I yeah. mean, the ideal thing to do, folks, really, is if someone wants you to paint their dog or cat or whatever, you say, yes, absolutely. The thing is, I will just leave you the picture when I finish it because I'm sure that you would want to do your own uh, frame and your own mount for your decor of your house. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right, they say. Well, then you, know, you get away with it altogether that way. <laughs> yeah, good idea, that. That is a good idea. Well, I hope that helps, Wendy. Next one. So this is uh, moving on to some feedback, some lovely emails that I wanted to read out today. Um, might inspire some people. So this one's from Kevin. He says, uh, Colin, um, I've been approached by some uh, and asked if someone would like to buy one of my drawings. The artwork in question is the two girls that you did of an Emil Vernon poster titled The Victorian Children. Uh, also, some of your animal drawings have turned out really well so due to copyright and permission am i able to sell or give away my artwork finished from your courses that's his first question which right. is obviously it's okay yes yeah, there's will. no copyright the uh, next thing kevin goes on to say is that i am a big beginner and i've been drawing since december 2015 at age 60 you're never too old to start but i came upon your site last year I cruised the internet to find lessons on creating masterpieces <laughs> and went through a lot of crap until I found your site. I like that we come up on a Google search for creating masterpieces. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I never tried good, don't doing that before. I might do that. Uh, I've learned so much with you where people are asking me to draw their dogs. Never in a million years would I have imagined going from drawing amazing stick people to actually creating artwork people would actually want to hang on their walls. It is because of your courses that this happened. If you ever need one more endorsement on how great your site is, just let me know. Oh, well, You just, you well, just gave awesome. it, Kevin. So thank you. Yeah, that's great. Well done. It's so another, just another story of people getting commissions oh. and people asked to do like requests and stuff. Absolutely. It's just so... 
Oh, it's so nice. It must feel like, I mean, I suppose you had this when you had s- students in person classes mm. and all of this mm. stuff, but you're getting it now from loads mm. of people all over the world. Absolutely. Yeah. That get this. Well, it's very satisfying. And I'm absolutely delighted that people are finding that, uh, uh, it, it's not necessarily, I mean, people, some of the, some of the people do it because, you know, they want to earn a few bob. Yeah. But others do it because they thoroughly enjoy doing it. And there's no reason why you shouldn't do both. Mm. Lovely. Next one from Rob. Uh, Rob says, Hi, Colin and Stephen. I was searching the internet trying to help with pastel pencils and was not having much luck until I stumbled upon your webpage. I would like to express my gratitude to you both for a wonderful site packed with information on pastel and other mediums. I find it refreshing to be given some free courses to follow along with to help to gain confidence. I have limited funds like most people, so the free taster lessons are very valuable to me. I did a couple of them and found that I like the pastel pencil work and I wanted to do more. The taster courses gave me the confidence to pay for a one month subscription. This opened up a lot of information and extra video tutorials to me and may I say at a reasonable price. I have noticed my pastel work improving thanks to you, so please keep up the good work you are doing. It is very much appreciated. Oh well, with no fear of that, we're going to carry on. And uh, we're we're uh, also getting better ourselves, as you can see, with the things that we're producing. Um, we're expanding what we do, expanding our ideas, and we're always looking for new ones. So yeah, you can always be rest assured that we're on the ball. This is always a good thing that I've always loved, and it, and it's just the way we are, um, and how we've always done things, and how you've done things in your business before I came along. Always growing there's always mm. something changing that's right like there's always an expansion or there's always a there's never a sticking to this is what we do it's always like mm. well, how can we do more mm. like you know we're, we're in our own satisfaction we're we're kind of always itching for that next challenge mm. or that like how can i improve this site more or how can i do? and i spoke to you last week about a few other things that i had on my list of saying I want to do this for them. I want to create this and add this onto the website. Can we do this? And can we do that? And can we give the best possible thing for the student? And this is the the thing that I get a kick out of um, is creating a hub of resources for mm. students, as well as putting all of your lessons up and pulling things together and editing and doing these podcasts. It's, it's always improving something. Absolutely. And, and, um, not only us, but uh, uh, Eileen, my wife, uh, she's constantly coming out with ideas. Yes, it's not just and us. And your fiance. Yeah. Um, I just dropped that in. So, so, <laughs> <you know, laughs> Recently. Your fiance yeah. is now also um, helping you with um, a lot of marketing and a lot of ideas. You see, you can't help but drag people are, are dragged in because of the enthusiasm that Colin Bradley Art is generating. Yeah. Even our our clients our members they're all coming up with suggestions yeah which we always take note of don't always go along with it but we do certainly listen consider all of them don't we yeah yeah and this is and that's another thing that we're always open to and i think this is our lives general who we are as people but we're always open to change and to addition adding Mm. things on and to you know to improving yeah um we're not never closed off to it, so this is the this is the good thing, and I'm glad it kind of translates when people, you know, buy membership and they see all of this stuff and they mm. go, wow, you know, and and they they do the lessons and it improves their art and it's kind of it's satisfying because we know that we're doing a good job, mm. and you know, I'm obviously reading out all these emails where people are gushing over how good everything is, and it's not an ego thing, but it's just to say that if anyone is considering it, if it's kind of to give a like little mini success stories that inspire people, mm. you know, to say, well, this person can do it. You can too, you know, absolutely. You know, this person's achieved something. So yeah. Okay. The next one from Brian. Uh, hello. I just wanted to thank Colin for sharing his absolutely amazing and wonderful story of how his life evolved through his art. I found it, was very interesting and thoroughly inspiring to read and enjoyed it immensely. I have to agree with you that the fellow that told you not to go to art school 
as it uh, I have to agree with a fellow that told you not to go to art school as it might mess you up your talents are truly amazing and I feel very infor- very fortunate to have stumbled onto your website and become a member and learned so much I always look forward to seeing your new lessons or demos and I'm going to give your constable picture a try and we'll send it when I'm done I am basically self-taught and only picked up doing art in the last few years uh, as I had stopped drawing since the early 80s during uh, due to family commitments and a full-time job. Sincerely, Brian. This, um, immediately you said that to me, it puts what we are all about firmly in its place. He's uh, never had any formal training at all and now he's considering doing the constable's corn mill. Cornfield. Cornfield, I mean. And um, I think that's just Im- amazing that someone could even think I can do it. But he's given, been given the confidence. He's done a few. He's, he's, he's got the enthusiasm. I'll give it a go. And he should too. Because just imagine him being really delighted with this, this corn, cornfield. Has it framed? Put it on his wall. And people come in and say, Oh, you got a print of John Constable? No, no, I did that. You didn't. How would that make him feel? Someone who's no no art lessons. Yeah, that's what it's all about, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Okay, next one from Bill. You must be feeling really good after all of these. <laughs> oh, I can't, I won't be able to get out the door, mate. <laughs> You'll have to widen it for me. <laughs> Uh, hi Stephen Colin first of all uh, oh no I first started with pastel pencils when I was coming up to retirement in 2003 and I saw uh, somewhere that Colin was doing a workshop at the Dun Cow in yeah, Dunchurch Dun Cow in Dunchurch yes that's right I went along painted a badger and uh, I went again and this time a meerkat and the last time it was a wolf, paint, wolf, wolf portrait all the paintings were framed in those fantastic frames Colin brought with him, and they are still hanging up today. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So you did you used to take frames? I used you? to take ready-made frames, Steve. Did yes. you? Yes, I did. Well, I found that people, what people wanted, they, when they'd finished their pictures at the end of a workshop, you've got 14 people or more sometimes, and um, I used to take um, oh, 20 or 30 frames with me. Did you? Yeah. And uh, I used to frame them for them. I used to, because they were... Easy to put in, yeah. and I used to say, oh, "No, I'll do them for you." And I used to frame them for them when they wanted them. They buy the frame, very cheap. You know, they were. We got them a, a good price, and we sold them for a reasonable um, profit. Yeah, and uh, and I put them together, so they went out. They came they went, in with nothing and went out with a with picture. A framed on picture. On. Yeah, that must have been really good. No, it was. was good. Yeah. Oh yes, it was a. It's a good little business to have, and uh, not only that, but the customers were uh, well. As you can tell, you delighted. Love, absolutely loving it, yeah. Um, Bill goes on to say, I really enjoyed it, but Colin stopped doing the day workshops. And the last time I heard Colin was doing a workshop was in Marlborough. Marlborough, yeah. South Devon. Devon. A bit right. too far to go. I don't remember you going to South Devon. Ah, well, it's it's a long part of my story. <laughs> <laughs> I went there for about five years. And sometimes I'd do two a year there. Really? Mm. Interesting. Very popular. Um, so then I started going to Bob L. Cox one day workshops. They were excellent, just like Collins, but then Bob finished them through ill health. Um, but I do still keep in touch with him. Now, uh, I joined the community last year. This is our pastel pencil community. And I've always been a fan of Collins art and his willingness to help others. Uh, the bottom line is that I was 80 years old last month and I thought, what do I want to do with my birthday? I know, I'll sign up for a year with Colin Bradley Art. Wise man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's plenty to get your teeth uh, into uh, with our membership. But no, that was, I thought that was a really nice Wasn't email. Nice there. again, yes. It's nice when um, it, these come up from the past. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, suddenly, oh, yes, I remember, you know. I don't always remember people, but uh, obviously I remember the locations. Yeah. Well, great. you did a lot of workshops, didn't you? Oh, yeah, all I did over it. the country. Did. Hundreds. Did you go? You went to Edinburgh at one point, didn't you? I did. I went to. You drove Castle. to. You drove to Edinburgh, didn't you? I did. And two, that's two years on the trot, successive years. And he wanted me to go back for the third year, but it happened to be when I was retiring. Yeah. And I and it was a long drive. I drove up there. It took you like. It, it took me. 
it took me oh i can't remember you, you did it over two days didn't you because you uh, stayed over well, the first I, yes i did i did when i went up there but i came back in one go did you it was a long way to come back yeah you must have had to fill up with petrol, didn't you? Oh, yes, I had to. Yes, of course you do. You can't yeah. get there on one day. Oh, it's a long way to go. No, it wasn't. It was, um, wasn't Edinburgh. It was, it was way up past Edinburgh. Was it? Right up to, um, oh, God, what's the name of it? Right up to the top of Scotland. Not John O'Groats or anything. No, no, no. That's no. like the no, top, right up, it? No, it was right up there on the Top ledge. If you look at Scotland, so you they've got drove the, top the ledge. entire right at the top. length of the country because we're in the down yeah. in the southeast. Yeah, yeah, pretty much the length yeah. of the country. Yep. Yeah. Bloody hell! It was for, for a week. I was a week workshop, so I stayed there. It's a, a Scottish castle. <laughs> Interestingly <laughs> enough, this castle. Um, just by the way, as we came out the dining room, I saw it, it was made of obviously stone, and there was a lot of. St- st- um, cut marks on the stone. And I, when I inquired, with, oh, well, that's where they used to sharpen the saws before they went out. Really? <laughs> the, wow. The, the Scottish Highlanders used to you know, sharpen their swords battle, on, the, sharpen their swords. on the walls. Yeah, it's on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> just to buy the way. That's amazing. I'll just throw that in. <laughs> that's really cool. Oh, I have to, I've had a lot of fun. It sounds like, it sounds like, yeah, worth it. Worth that long drive, but yeah. Oh well, I'm, yeah. I remember when you retired from doing those. It, was, it took a lot out of you, though. That was a lot yeah, of driving, that, 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 a lot of traveling, absolutely. a lot of packing up the car with all of the stuff that you needed to take. Oh, because yes. people didn't need anything, did they? You had the pencils for them. I had all the all the pencils, everything. all the paper. Yeah, they had everything, didn't they? Mm. That's um, why they kept coming back. It was so yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Bill. Thanks for getting in touch. Okay, the last one here is from Neil. Uh, Hi, Colin. I've been watching your video on the Constable's Cornfield that you put on the website. Uh, You mentioned that you didn't know the exact size of the original painting. Well, I can tell you it measures 143 by 122 centimetres. That's a pretty big painting. That's a big painting. And I did it A4 size. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's big. It was big. Bigger than that. I was just looking at the the Polpera Harbour behind us where yeah, we're, where we're recording this, and that's yeah, a kitchen bigger. table. Yeah, out there, that you the, just they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that table was seventy centimeters long. So what was that? One hundred thirteen centimeters. Wow. So can you imagine how large that picture is? That's pretty big, isn't it? It is a big picture. Wow. Okay. Um, we haven't got a big enough camera for. <laughs> for for that wide enough lens um so neil says your finished drawing is absolutely superb along with the contents of the videos being a novice to drawing i'm finding your teaching methods very easy to follow and once mastered produce excellent results and neil asks if i email some work i have done could i get some critique absolutely of course you can neil Mm, that's what we're here for as a member you get the critique and feedback on your work so yeah, that's great. So thanks everyone for all of your emails and all of your kind comments and and feedback and your questions. This is what this podcast is for. It keeps me going, Steve. All of that. Yeah, food. No, it's yes, feeds you. That's it. Feeds me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone. We'll keep sending it because we need to feed him <laughs> to keep <laughs> Dad going and enjoying this all. Um, but no, I mean, I know you see a lot of stuff that we, you know, I all the emails and the um, YouTube comments and stuff. And, and we obviously, we pick stuff for this podcast that feel add value to, mm. to what people are consuming. So uh, keep them coming in, keep all your comments and questions and, and such coming in. And then we'll keep doing this podcast, sharing it. Mm-hmm. Happy. Lovely. Okay. Thanks, Dad. That's all right. My pleasure. And we'll talk next time. Thanks everyone for listening. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Enjoy, Enjoy your week. week.